all this is dr mubin sayed welcome to one more show this is an impromptu important show so here is the tale of two states in one state if you said this sentence and the sentence is and i'm going to show it to you and read it to you as well the sentence is based on the currently available data patients should be informed of the possible cardiac complications that can arise after receiving mrna covid-19 vaccines with a high level of global immunity to covid-19 the benefits of vaccination benefit of vaccination is likely outweighed by this abnormally high risk of cardiac related deaths among men in this age group this is from the florida's uh, surgeon general's notice so i'll read it and show it to you again but if you said this here in california that would get your license cancelled and if you said that in florida that would be in line with what is the observation so let's look at this notice essentially the summary is that florida yesterday has the surgeon general of florida has recommended against covid-19 mrna vaccines for males ages 18 to 39 years old that is the recommendation yesterday pretty bold recommendation and they do have data to back it up as well i think one benefit of this will be that the discussion about vaccines vaccine related uh, deaths or uh, cardiac related deaths with higher risk because of vaccines mrna in men in this age group this discussion will open up more on the mainstream as well and that is a huge uh, contribution and then in my opinion florida has done a very common sense decision to say we recommend against they're not saying we are stopping they're not saying we must give they're not saying you should not talk about it they presented data they said our recommendation is against i'm sure that there are people with comorbidities there are people at high risk and they can still choose to but this is a very wise decision can consider that i'm i'm actually shocked compare that to the decision california made and without any politics the the california's decision is that i'm not even going to let you talk about it and if you did i'll cancel your career <laughs> and florida is saying hey we saw this and please talk about it so i repeated this part so let's see so all of these links are in the description of this video plus in this video's description there is a link a special gift for you and that is this is the link drbean.com yt-special-p and here for one time fee because we teach medical sciences we call it a student fee so one time fee of 67 you get access to 967 lectures on dr bean one time fee no recurrence no fine print no stopping of you cannot watch this or that whatever is there you can watch it and you can watch it whenever you like so take advantage of that here is the notice this notice is guidance for mrna covid-19 vaccine october 7 2022 and i just want to read this part first so i had read this to you before i want to read this the state surgeon general now recommends against the covid-19 mrna vaccines for males age ages 18 to 39 years old so huge so i know what's going to happen there are going to be pro vaccine folks and i consider myself a pro vaccine person they're going to be pro vaccine folks that are going to be so snobbish that they would say this is a stupid decision a silly decision a bad decision bad science and they're creating risk and stuff then there are going to be anti vaccine folks who are going to say this is awesome and the remaining country is stupid and so on so i would like us to stay a little above that so that we can look at the actual science they're talking about and then be able to make decision or think with that florida showed us how to think not how to politic at least in this one so 
Democrat or Republican or Independent or some other country or whoever, I think it is a thinking pattern that they gave with data. So let's look at the data first. Here is the data. This is their study, and I have actually linked this study as well, plus in here in this document, wherever they say analysis, that is this study. I have separately provided you the link to this study as well. So let's look at the study quickly. Exploring the relationship between all cause and cardiac related mortality following COVID-19 vaccination or, or infection in Florida residents is self-controlled case series study. Now, the self-controlled case series study or SCCS is a study in which you take a factor, for example, let's say mRNA vaccines or vaccines. You take a factor and you observe deaths after that and compare those deaths to a time where similar deaths were counted but without that factor. So this is called self-controlled case series. So that is what Florida did. This is a normal thing, you know, the background incidence of something. What they wanted to understand was the, to evaluate the risk of all cause and cardiac related mortality. So they did two things following COVID-19 vaccinations. They did two things. They observed two things. One factor they wanted to see was what happens to all cause mortality. And the other factor they wanted to see was what happens to cardiac related mortality or deaths after the vaccination. So let me go to the actual data points that are of interest. You can then read the rest of it as well. And if you would say that, hey, Mubin left this out or left that out, I cannot read the whole document word by word. I want to highlight the main points and hopefully pique your interest enough that you say, I'm going to go read it as well. All right, so look at this. Primary analysis results. All cause deaths following vaccination. And just one more comment before we go there. What they did was they took data from the Reportable Disease Repository, Merlin, Florida State Health Online Tracking System, and death record data from vital statistics were linked. So they took that data, they linked them together. And they looked at age 18 to 20, 18 and over who died within 25 weeks of COVID-19 vaccine. So now if I go back here, this is what they found. In the 28 days following vaccination, and they used the vaccination being the after the second dose, not after the first dose, because they said the self controlled case study that they're doing here that requires one dose vaccine and then the observation but these vaccines are not one dose vaccines so what they did was they observed after the second dose and considered that time together as one dose so in the 28 days following vaccination a statistically significant increase in cardiac oh, sorry let me read this one no increase in risk was observed for all cause deaths Right, But look at the second one. In the 28 days following the vaccination, a statistically significant increase in cardiac-related deaths was detected for the entire study population. Now here, if you look at this number, this is a very interesting thing. This is The number is 1.07. What that means is 7% increase. And of course, I think you can just stop here and say, well, that is just 7%. But hold on to your thought for a second. 7% increase, and this is statistically significant because the confidence interval is not crossing the unity. It is 1.03 to 1.12. Good. This is for the whole population. So generally, regardless of age, sex, ethnicity, whole population after vaccinations with mRNA vaccines or vaccines, generally from 7% is the mean increase. And from 3 to 12% is the increase. So generally, the deaths have increased. Now, here is a concerning part. This is why they said we do not recommend or we recommend against. They said stratified 
stratifying by age group revealed risk were significantly higher risk in incidence was significantly higher for age group 25 to 39 25 to 39 and look at the risk 2.16 that is 2.16 times increase and look at the confidence interval 1.35 to 3.47 3.47 so about 247% increase in cardiac-related deaths within 20 days of the vaccination. That is a very interesting data point and very concerning and very scary. My both sons are in this age group. They both got Moderna, uh, sorry, mRNA vaccines. So that is one. So once again, if you put these in context, overall, everyone had an increased risk, 7, 3 to 12%. For the this age group, 25 to 39, so 116 uh, and 35, 35% to 247%. Then for 60 and older, 1.05 and 1.01 to 1.10. Increase statistically significant because it does not cross the uh, line of unity. This is the most important part. If you just wanted to hit this much, we're done. This is it. This is the reason based on which they said we recommend against. Now if we go back and read their recommendation, they are saying the state surgeon general now recommends against the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines from males age, ages 18 to 39 years old. Individuals and healthcare providers should also be aware that the analysis found males uh, over the age of 60 had a 10% increased risk of cardiac-related death within 28 days of mRNA vaccine. Non-mRNA vaccines were not found to have these increased risks among any population. Actually, they found non-mRNA vaccine to have a lower risk. But I want to I wanna add one more data point here. Non-mRNA vaccine or adenovirus vaccines have been really terrible for women. My wife had the injury from this as well. Women under 49 years of age with mRNA vaccines do not, they develop lots of uh, issues as well. With That's why Johnson & Johnson is not recommended anymore or, or is not continuing. So please, if you're a woman, then the chances are better with mRNA compared to uh, non-mRNA. But if you're a man, then the chances are better with the non-mRNA compared to mRNA, at least in this age group and above 60. So, so I'll answer the questions in a second. Let me just complete my thought here. Then they say Floridians Floridians are encouraged to discuss all the potential benefits and risk of receiving mRNA vaccine with their healthcare provider. I am so thrilled and jealous because, because Californians are encouraged not to discuss because if their doctor said something, then they can complain about him and the doctor can lose their license. This is, what country is this? Floridians are encouraged to discuss all the potential benefits and risks of receiving. So if I go here, the, this, this is truly a tale of two cities for me. Let me show you one more thing. This is the, I discussed this a few days ago. This is the bill, California legislation and their bill 2098. In this bill, what they have done is, and I discussed it a few days ago, they have passed this law, passed it. It's not that it is yet to be passed. It has been passed. It has been approved, said yes, governor signed. This law says professional misconduct if there is misinformation. But look at the misinformation. Means false information that is contradicted by contemporary scientific consensus contrary to the standard of care. All of this is such a slush that they can punish whoever they want. 
right? They, they can just say, well, this is against the country. And here is Florida saying Floridians are encouraged to discuss all the potential benefits and risks of receiving mRNA COVID-19 vaccine with their healthcare providers. The risk associated with mRNA vaccination should be weighed against the risk associated with COVID-19 infection. And I would then also add to this that the risk would also change because of the comorbidities. So the health of the person, the vaccinations, status, the risk benefit, and then the COVID-19 risk benefit for a specific age, sex, and ethnicity. So what a what an interesting uh, document here. It seems thoughtful. It seems like somebody was thinking. And then they came back and they said, here is what we observed and here is how we are thinking about it. They didn't say stop all the vaccines or they didn't say give all the vaccines. They said we are recommending against it and here is our reasoning. And now you go talk with your doctor and see what is right for you. So it has truly baffled me to look at these two side by side. Look at California. This is the California... While the legislation has raised concerns over freedom of speech, the bill's sponsors said the extensive harm caused by false information required holding incompetence, incompetent or ill-intentioned doctors accountable. How would they say incompetent or ill-intentioned? In my opinion, these sponsors, the legislatures, they themselves are incompetent for their job. In order for a patient to give informed consent, they have to be well informed, which, which we are going to now squash, said State Senator Richard Penn, a Democrat from Sacramento and a co-author of the bill, a pediatrician himself and a prominent proponent of stronger vaccination requirements. He said the law was intended to address the most egregious cases of deliberately misleading patients. Laws cannot be made to say it is only for this little person. They become generalized and they start getting used to abuse. And this is what Flor California did. And here is what Florida is, how they are thinking. And uh, please don't bring politics in it. It's not um, my intention to compare some Democrat and Republicans. It's really scientific part of it that really makes me uh, appreciate how Florida is doing. Okay, so please do me a favor. The links are in the description. Um, check those links out. I am sorry that I write in the morning of a weekend. We actually went out for a cool bean walk and I came back and I wanted to make sure that we discuss this. And once again, uh, while parting, please, there is a link in the description to purchase Dr. Bean premium account, 900 more videos there. And one time, $67, one time, no recurrence, no fine print, nothing hidden, no, no agendas. And then there are other links in the description as well if you would like to support this work. For example, you can use PayPal, or you can buy me a coffee, or you can become part of Substack, etc. So with this, let me just see quickly if I can answer a couple of questions and then we break and you have a nice, beautiful weekend. And I know this camera is not yet fully adjusted. The, the colors are oversaturated. The overexposure is occurring. The, the, the speed, the frame rates are not correct. So I'll adjust them. I had just a lot to do over the last week. So I'm still working on it. So Sunset says... Is it possible? Actually, Sunset, yes. Good point. Let me actually show you that within this document, there are tables, and I would really recommend, because they say that for all other age groups, there is no statistically significant increase in cardiac-related deaths. So others are not at risk except this group. And other vaccines actually have lesser risk. So um, let me... I actually saw that here. Look at this one. So thank you for Sunset Valley to bring it up. Uh, they said 
males receiving mRNA vaccination had significantly higher risk, 1.11, 1.05 to 1.18, while males receiving vaccination that were not mRNA unknown had significantly lower risk, 0 0.75 and 0 0.58 to 0 0.98. So other vaccines or unknown vaccines were lower risk. Now they're talking males. They're not talking about the males within this age range of 18 to 39. If that is the case, then again, this is the number. That's a scary number. And uh, Sunset Valley, yes, the, here are the tables. I would actually recommend if you can look at these tables. This is table group one, where they're talking about exposure, all-cause deaths, follow-up, and then risk. So this is the relative incidence following COVID-19 vaccination or infection for all cause and cardiac related deaths during the risk period. So this is very interesting to look at. For example, what they said was for other age groups and sex and uh, uh, ethnicity, the data was not significant. That means it vaccine did not cause as harm like they did, or at least did not... They, only observe, I shouldn't use the word harm, they observed death and cardiac related deaths. So for other groups, that was not the case. So for example, let's look at 40 to 59. Baseline period, risk period. And here, if you see from reference, confidence interval is 0 0.89 to 1.06, which crosses unity, so it is not statistically significant. So cardiac related deaths, similarly, if you see here, greater than 18, 1.07, 18 to 24, 1.54, then 2.6. But if you see this 1.54, the confidence interval crosses 0 0.57 to 4.19, so it crosses unity, it is not significant. This one is significant, 25 to 39, which we just saw. This one is not significant. This one is significant and at a lower rate, but it is significant for more than 60. Um, this is significant. That is, I believe, everyone. No, that is 18. That is everyone. This is not significant. And so you can look at this data. And then table two, relative incidence of cardiac-related deaths following COVID-19 vaccination for males by age group and vaccination type. So here, the, these are 18 years of male, sorry, males only, 18 years and over. So overall, 9% increase from 3 to 15 percent range and then if you see eight, 18 male mrna 1.1 11 percent increase and it is significant 5 to 18 percent so this is the mrna vaccines in males greater than 18 years of age then males not mrna or unknown actually less risk and even the confidence interval is significant and it is less so less risk of cardiac issues then here is the data for 18 to 39 baseline then 18 to 39 mrna that is this number were really really scary 84 percent increase or 5 to 3 3 2.21 percent 221 percent this one is not significant this one is not significant this is not significant this is significant, males more than 60 years of age, about 8% increased risk of cardiac-related death after the within 28 days of the mRNA vaccine. This one is significant, and this is significant non-vaccine. So that is how the data is. So we have discussed in the past many times how to keep your immune system modulated. So when you are getting a vaccine, for example, we were discussing to travel, although we canceled that for the time being, that country where we wanted to go, they had a strict requirement of a vaccine within last nine months. And so then we were thinking about what are the kind of things we can do. Anyways, This is the um, this is the discussion. Thank you very much for your time right in the morning. My work is primarily supported by you. And just one request to look at that link in the description. If you would like one way to support this work, 
is to to use this link in the description that is just a very tiny amount of uh, fee and it is one time fee or you can use paypal or you can buy me a coffee and there are other links as well to support thank you very much have a nice weekend and i would talk with you on monday bye bye for now